Summers have been getting hotter and hotter for the years and unless we all want to be barbecuing souffle and our radiators, there are a few things we do need to take care about. The Mini is a lovely car, it's so much fun to drive, but when it comes to handling really really hot weather, there are a few things that we do need to be aware of and take care of at the same time. has it that Sir Alex Sigonis actually came up with a final rough sketch of, the, of, of this legendary car, the Mini, while having lunch or dinner at a restaurant and some people say he actually sketched the whole thing on a tablecloth which he took with him when he left and some say he actually did it on a napkin. Now for the purposes of this video I think the napkin is the best fitting scenario for it and you can actually see the main ideas that were troubling him in actually putting his final uh, design together like for example his biggest challenge was where to put so much stuff in such a small car he was thinking initially of placing the gas tank within the engine bay it being a transversely mounted engine he had nowhere to actually place the radiator and that's why he decided to shove it on the side of the car and that's pretty much how a legendary car came up with some legendary overheating issues So what's wrong with the side mounted radiator anyway? Well, when the radiator of a car is facing forward, that means as the car lances forward, all of the available wind goes through the radiator and offers cooling. In the case of the Mini, of course, where the radiator is at 90 degrees to the flow of the air, nothing goes through it and that's why we actually need a fan to do the dirty job of pushing the air through that radiator. As if all of that wasn't complicated enough, air availability to the radiator is further impeded by where the radiator is situated within the engine bay. 50% of the height of that radiator sits right behind the beautiful mini hood, which means, with the hood down, air just doesn't get to the radiator directly. It is worth mentioning at this point that despite the fact that the cooling system of a classic mini is actually a very very well designed one, it's good for moderate climates really, because when the temperature is flirting around the 45 degrees centigrade mark, things actually do tend to get hot. The biggest culprit to that is how little space is left for the radiator to direct airflow. The alternator is in the way, the water shroud is in the way, there's probably an oil cooler in there, so not much space is available on this side of the engine. So I thought, what about the other side? The solution to my concerns of increasing the cooling capacity of the standard mini cooling system somehow came in the form of the fresh air scoop. Since it already draws in huge amounts of fresh air, I figured why not use this one and come up with some sort of a design that will help my mini cool down. By chopping up the back of it and fixing it onto the engine, I came up with a pretty interesting cooling installation involving a backup radiator. Cutting a long story short, I basically side mounted an auxiliary radiator. One side to that was connected to the on off switch for the heater and the other side goes straight to the pump return feed. And Bob's your uncle really. By hooking the system up to the on off switch for the heater, it means I can actually control how much cooling I get when and how. When things get hot, I switch the system on. When things get cool again, I switch the system off. In case you're wondering where that auxiliary radiator came from, it's actually the heating element from my cabin heater. I modified the box in such a way that I can actually slide the auxiliary radiator in and out without having to remove the entire unit. And that actually took away the concern of carrying one extra part with me every time I switch from a summer to a winter setup. Places if you own a mini to bring in about for for a 
spin. It's it's a really old road. It's curved uh, around the mountain, and it's full of just the right amount of corners and tight bends that you would really enjoy driving your mini through. And that's exactly what I'm about to do. Oh, here's a nice one. Now the real benefit of the setup I've um, I've come up with with Paul in terms of cooling is that it will actually offer extra cooling at the exact um, RPM that I actually need it. Now throughout throughout the summer that I've been driving and testing and testing the system again in various conditions and mind you it has been a record breaking hot summer the highest temperature recorded was um, a bit shy of 48 degrees centigrade and that's the hottest I can recall in my lifetime of a, of a temperature increase now on that particular day without me knowing I was driving and I ended up driving for five and a half hours midday through God knows what awkward road networks through the mountains of Greece trying to make it to our summer house and Bob did just fine he literally survived the 48 degrees centigrade thanks to my auxiliary um, radiator if I did not have that I'm pretty sure I would have had some stories to share by today now the beauty of it is that since I've actually placed my auxiliary radiator right behind the fresh air vent scoop it means it will not give you much during idling or in hot traffic conditions whereby most of the cooling will come through radiation because there's no air coming through but when the start when the car starts moving and the air starts going through the air scoop and then inevitably through the, the auxiliary radiator it really makes a huge difference because every time the car would have a tendency of overheating during summertime that would always be under either load say going up hills or at higher rpm so if i kept on driving consistently above 3800 rpm roughly the car would have a tendency to reach the 84 degrees uh, mark and start climbing towards 87 and upwards from there but with my backup cooling it never ever ever breached my let's say psychological limit of 90 degrees and uh, to be very precise during the during the heat wave week that i actually had to clock quite a few quite a few kilometers for work and for visiting my parents um the highest it ever got was a bit shy of 90 degrees which is pretty okay when the outside temperature is 48 and mind you if the outside recorded temperature is 48 i'm pretty sure the temperature on the tarmac is going to be well above 50. and bob did just fine i'm really really happy for the way this um this system works and it's not that i'm going to need it in europe that much um, if all goes well with the European trip, I want Bob to be able to handle more harsh conditions than what Europe has to offer Like the Sahara Desert for example, or I don't know what awkward deserts in Kazakhstan and what have you Because if all goes well with the European round, I don't intend to stop there There will be a second part to the trip, but that's a bit, uh, a bit far away I got the European part to sort out first and uh, so far so good. The views are spectacular from up here, absolutely sp spectacular. But I think I better pay more attention to the road and my driving than the views if I want to keep on running episodes and drive Bob. I'll never grow tired of this car or driving this car in places like this. Bob has been a good lad so far.